We welcome you back to CBS Mornings. We've got big, big breaking news right now, so let's bring in all of our local stations for this special report. This is a CBS News special report. I'm Gail King with Tony DeCopel and Nate Burleson. We are here in New York, and the White House has just confirmed that the United States and Russia have agreed, have agreed to a prisoner swap to free basketball star Brittany Griner. Very big news indeed. The two-time Olympic gold medalist for Team USA was released just minutes ago in exchange for convicted Russian arms dealer Victor Boot. Known as the man who makes war possible, he was serving a 25-year sentence in the U.S. for conspiring to kill Americans and conspiring to sell weapons to a terrorist organization. And if you don't remember what happened, Griner was detained in Russia in February after airport security found vape canisters containing cannabis oil in her luggage. In August, she was sentenced to nine years in prison for drug possession and smuggling. Well, Face the Nation moderator and chief foreign affairs correspondent, that's Margaret Brennan, is with us now from Washington. Margaret, this is ex so exciting and such welcome news. What can you tell us about this exchange? It absolutely is, Gail, and this is a big deal for the Biden administration. A U.S. official has confirmed the transfer has taken place this morning, just within the past few moments. Brittany Griner was transferred into U.S. custody. Now, the prisoner swap took place on an airport tarmac in the United Arab Emirates. That was the agreed upon neutral point for a U.S. government plane carrying arms dealer Victor Boot to meet up with a Russian aircraft carrying the 32 year old American basketball star. President Biden authorized this swap just last week. Griner's first action, we expect, after these nine months of imprisonment will be to soon undergo a medical evaluation. This is standard operating procedure. This is something that is expected to occur at a U.S. military base, uh, and she will have to clear that before returning to the United States. It's a shame. Margaret, you know, everybody wants to know how soon can she be back on U.S. soil? Well, that medical evaluation has to, to first take place, Gail. And I want to point out here that the, the very fact that the transfer happened at all is huge uh, because the yes. diplomacy had been stalled for so long and it all came together just within the past few weeks. Now, this is a one for one swap. The reason that is important is because the Biden administration has been trying for months to get out two Americans, Brittany Griner and Paul Whalen. He is a U.S. Marine veteran who has been behind bars since 2018. At this hour, uh, CBS is reporting that it is just a one-for-one -one swap, that Paul Whalen remains in Russian custody at the moment, but Brittany Griner is now in the hands of U.S. officials uh, with U.S. custody, no longer behind bars, no longer in Russia, now in the United Arab Emirates. So this is a, a big breakthrough for the administration, and we'll be getting uh, further details and reporting. Gail, I just want to make this point here to you because I think it's important disclosure to our viewers. CBS first learned that this swap was going to happen last Thursday, and CBS mm. News agreed that the Griner for Bout swap which we knew was underway, that we would not report on the details of it. This was at the request of the White House, which asked us not to make it public because officials expressed grave concern about the fragility of the emerging deal and feared it would impede the safety, perhaps even put those Americans at risk. And so we are bringing this news to you first this morning, Gail, and it is certainly good news for the Griner family. It wow. is so exciting, and of course, we kept our word on that. Of course. It, 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 we, we've known about it for some time. Just to see it happen and come about, Margaret, I can't tell you how excited everybody is that was pulling for Brittany Griner. This is such great news. Thank you, Margaret. Thank That's you. right, Margaret. We'll check back in with you a little bit later. And yes, CBS did hold up our end of the bargain. And speaking of that bargain, uh, we do expect to hear from President Biden real soon. Chief White House correspondent Nancy Cordes joins us right now. Nancy, good morning. What are we hearing? Good morning, Nate. We have some new information. We were told by a U.S. official a short time ago that the president this morning spoke by phone with Brittany Griner herself and with her wife, Sherelle. We're told that the vice president was in the room in the Oval Office when that call took place. And you can only imagine what kinds of emotions were expressed 
on that phone call. We know that President Biden has been monitoring this exchange all morning long here at the White House, and we can also tell you that he personally signed the commutation of Victor Booth's sentence within the past week, which paved the way for this morning's swap. And now this deal appears to have come together quite quickly within the past two weeks, according to our reporting, because as recently as the end of November, the State Department was still blasting the Kremlin for a failure to bargain in good faith. Over the summer, White House officials repeatedly told us that they had made an offer for a prisoner swap, but that they were getting no response. Now, that's not the type of thing that they usually reveal publicly, but in this case, they said they felt they had no choice but to up the public pressure because they were getting radio silence from the Russians. Now, Gritner's return, Reiner's return for boot is the Biden administration's second prisoner swap with Russia. Back in April, they swapped Marine veteran Trevor Reed for a Russian who had been convicted of smuggling cocaine. At the time, the U.S. used flight tracking services to make sure that the prisoner exchange was taking place as planned. And that's something they may have used today again during the exchange of Griner, who was coming from Russia, and Boot coming from the United States. Now, we don't know exactly where Griner's plane is going to be headed next, but we do know that the eventual destination, of course, is here in the U.S. All right, Nancy, thank you so much. You know, we had the interview with Sherelle Griner, who was Brittany's wife, a couple of months ago, and she was saying that she had spoken to her on the phone and she was so worried about her mental health yeah. that Brittany Griner was very worried that she might have been forgotten in this country. Yeah. And certainly that has not been the case. People have been working on it, and I can't only imagine. I reached out to Sherelle last week when we knew that this was happening. Of course, she's not saying anything. Nobody wanted to do anything that would jeopardize this day. Yeah, and now yeah. that it is here. I remember you sitting so down with happy. her and um, asking you, does she have hope? And you said yes. that's all she can yes. is have hope. But you said there was some despair yes. um, th that she had in her eyes because she just did not know. Now she has the answers that we've all been waiting for, yeah. which is Brittany is coming home. Yeah, we want to see that plane land safely. Also, uh, eager for news on her health. I mean, Brittany was in That's a penal right. colony for too. multiple weeks. Yes. The conditions there are reputed to be very bad. Right. Uh, so we shall see. The labor, the nutrition, even her mental health. Yeah, it, it, it's been a year, right? Almost. It's yeah. been more, yeah. This is, uh, I can barely speak. I'm so excited about this news today. Senior investigative correspondent, that's Catherine Harridge, has covered this story since it began. Catherine, Brittany Griner, as we know, is not going to go home immediately. We know that she has to go to a hospital first. Can you walk us through the process about what will happen to her now? What are the steps? Well, Gail, good morning. This is really the beginning of a journey for Brittany Griner and her family. And while every case is unique, it comes down to a three-phase process. First, as you and Margaret mentioned, a medical and mental health evaluation. Second, what intelligence officials refer to as a strategic debriefing. This generally involves the intelligence agencies as well as law enforcement to understand every element of Brittany Griner's detention, also the conditions, and more specifically, whether the Russians sought to obtain intelligence or information from her, and finally, reintegration. Many hostages I've spoken to discuss how there can be this sense of sensory overload after their captivity and the challenges of reuniting with their family after an experience where they feel they've become a changed person. Catherine, you uh, recently spoke to some of the federal agents who were involved in the apprehension of Victor Boot. Uh, these are complicated trade-offs, uh, high Correct. diplomatic uh, discussions, uh, but I am curious, what did those agents tell you about this man, Victor Boot, who is now uh, free and going back to Russia? Well, former DEA agents that were directly involved in this global manhunt for Victor Boot told us that they've always seen him as a major threat to U.S. national security because he was an arms dealer with global reach because of his deep Russian connections. He was someone who was willing to sell arms to drug cartels, to designated terrorist groups, and individuals with the intent and the capability of harming U.S. Americans and officials. In addition, what we heard from these former agents is that it was a Herculean effort to capture Boot 
across three continents in 2008 in Thailand. He was eventually extradited to the United States where he was convicted of charges including conspiring to kill Americans. And finally, they told us they want to see the families reunited, but they had deep concerns about any potential trade with Victor Boot because of the message they felt it would send that it made good business sense to target Americans. It's understandable. Uh, Catherine, thank you very much. Appreciate that. We're going to bring in now CBS News foreign policy and national security contributor H.R. McMaster, a retired Army lieutenant general, and he's also national security advisor under President Trump. General, good morning to you. Uh, we just talked a little bit there with Catherine about how complicated these trade offs are. Uh, huge day, very significant. A prisoner swamp, one of the most significant of the Biden administration, arguably one of the most significant America has undertaken going all the way back to the 1960s. I think we should start just with your reaction to it. Hey, good morning, Tony. Well, yeah, I shall share your sentiment. Miguel articulated there about how happy we are uh, that Bernie Griner's back. You know, of course, what we're dealing with is a criminal state, all right? We know that Vladimir Putin not only uh, arbitrarily uh, detains uh, innocent people for political leverage, but he also commits murder of individuals and mass murder. You know what we're seeing in in uh, in Ukraine and and what we saw in Syria and, and Chechnya from from this criminal state. But I think what's really important to to note is that a lot of people have been working on this for a long time, and I think it's uh, it's important to recognize that the Biden administration prioritized you know getting Brittany Griner back. Uh, they've also prioritized getting others out, like Trevor Reed. And I think uh, this is an important duty for every administration. I remember when Aya um, Hijazi was was released under the Trump administration or Chaplain Brunson from Turkey. Now, those were from ostensible, you know, partner states. Uh, but it's even tougher, you know, to get people out of Russia. And and uh, I'll tell you, Tony, it's, it's also important for us to keep in mind those who are left behind. I'm sure that this is what Brittany Griner will, will make this point as well. This is Paul Whelan and and, and uh, Mark Fogel, for example, who remain uh, unlawfully detained in Russia. All right, We're thinking about them also today. As yeah. happy as we are for Brittany Griner, no one is Absolutely. forgetting the two other Americans who yeah. are there. Absolutely. Uh, General McMaster, thank you very much. We appreciate your perspective on all this. But uh, we want to emphasize it is a great day. President Biden expected to speak soon. We will, of course, bring you that. Uh, live when it happens, if it happens during our show. And our coverage of Brittany Griner's release will continue on CBS News streaming and also your local news. And of course, as normal, we have much more news ahead on CBS Mornings. This has been a CBS News special report. I'm Tony DeCopa with Gail King and Nate Burleson, CBS News, New York.